smart, borderline nerdy. Being driven to success. Who don't cause trouble. Hardworking. And we not call for attention to oneself. Smart, successful, wealthy, hardworking, and self-reliant. These are some words we often associate with Asian communities across Canada. They are also stereotypes perpetuating what we call the model minority myth. While some of us may not be familiar with the term, it's a feeling that we've all encountered to varying degrees. The model minority myth depicts all Asian Canadians as highly intelligent and hardworking, a shining example of how to overcome discrimination and hardship. In other words, we are the law-abiding citizens, the favored neighbors, and the non-threatening group of color. What on the surface may seem like outstanding praise becomes a double-edged sword. Here's how the model minority myth is problematic. It contributes to a culture of silence. Being pressured to meet the standard of the so-called good immigrant, Asian Canadians are often hesitant to speak out against social injustice, including recent incidents of anti-Asian violence related to the coronavirus pandemic. There's very much this culture of like, just keep your head down and work hard and everything will be okay. Kind of underneath that is this idea that we've already given you this opportunity. Now you want more? You want the opportunity to speak your mind? <laughs> Between 1881 and 1884, over 17,000 Chinese people migrated to Canada to help build the Transcontinental Railroad. Targeted by racist policies, Chinese workers were exploited by being paid lower wages. Likewise, in 1942, Japanese Canadians under the War Measures Act had their possessions seized and sold. Forcibly interned, many were then displaced to interior regions of Canada to work as indentured laborers for little pay, often under inhumane conditions. Well, my family uh, were evacuated from Vancouver to a little town called Raymond as a beat worker. I think my father worked for something like 25 cents an hour. At our farm, we were in an old chicken coop. I could remember in the mornings when we woke up, there was no insulation. It was absolutely cold, and the, uh, the sheet would be frozen where you breathe, and it would be a cone. Today, Asian communities face similar kinds of exploitation and discrimination that they faced back then. As a temporary foreign worker, your stay in Canada is dependent on a singular employer. You cannot work for any other company. During the early uh, weeks of the pandemic, many of the workers in the meat plants actually started to notice that things are happening. There's something wrong happening on the floor of the factories. But they were not heard. And so it took the death of a worker for the public to know the situation and force the closure temporarily of the meat plants. Because their situations are not known or not probably known but not fully acknowledged. And therefore, public system decisions do not address their vulnerabilities. Of course, your, your presence is acknowledged and tolerated. But if your voice actually being heard. Dans mon milieu de travail, euh, on prend toujours pour acquis que je vais être une bonne travailleuse puis que je suis intelligente. Euh, mais ça, en fait, ça légitime juste que tu peux me donner des heures supplémentaires puis que je vais pas me plaindre ou que euh, je vais rester silencieuse, passive puis suivre les ordres de la majorité. Asian people in particular, what they experience is the phenomenon called the bamboo ceiling. Similar to the glass ceiling for women, that makes it particularly difficult to break through due to, um, in large part, the organizational culture uh, and myths and stereotypes that people have about uh, racialized minorities, including Asian people. The second problem with the model minority myth is that Asian Canadians are not all the same. Just like our dumplings, we are different inside out. In fact, not all Asian groups in Canada benefit from the same level of financial success and education. Even within one ethnic group, you would not have had the same experience, but certainly across like country borders and stuff and different generations of immigration. As much as I think it's great when we kind of uh, 
group together as Asians and build solidarity, uh, there is a little bit of erasure that happens with individual groups. For Filipinos, as much as it's great to be uh, bunched in and have uh, that sense of community with other Asians, we're uh, quite different from uh, other, other Asians. We're often omitted, we're often not there. Usually folks talk about Japan, China, and Korea. Breaking down the data by ethnicity and looking at things like employment and education, you start to realize that not all Asians are crazy rich doctors or real estate moguls. Many of us are working class, are employed in precarious jobs, or lack work stability, education, or access to citizenship. These are the realities that get masked by the model minority myth and feed the false narrative that says that there aren't social needs for Asian communities. Finally, the third problem with the model minority myth is that it is a tool used to divide communities of color. By definition, a model minority cannot exist in a vacuum. For a group to rise as the so-called model, they are pitted against other groups in the same system. Historically, the model minority myth has been used to create a wedge between Asian Canadians and other minorities in Canada. Elevating Asian Canadians as deserving and hardworking diminishes the struggles of other racialized minorities. It minimizes the role systemic racism plays in perpetuating inequality. So to sum it up, the model minority myth is problematic because it silences our voices, it masks the different realities and challenges that our communities face, and it creates divisions between people of Asian descent and other minority groups. So what actions can we take as individuals and as a society to dispel this label? Education. Education is so, so, so important. And, you know, it's a continuing uh, education from both sides. The less we talk about it, the less the system is going to change. To speak for ourselves, uh, to speak truth to the issues that we e experience, and in what ways then are we also the drivers for change? We have to fight for that because we cannot get there with just staying silent. Uh, you can join uh, protests, you can lobby politicians, we should be working together to collectively and collaboratively uh, address our common concerns uh, because we are actually seeking the same thing, uh, equity and equality uh, for all people. If we don't start the discussion, who will? <laughs>